Hi everyone, we're going to talk about 17.3, the process of speciation today. So some key questions from our book. What types of isolation lead to the formation of new species? What is the current hypothesis about Galapagos species? And then we have some vocabulary and some tips for taking notes. So the vocabulary words that you should know the definitions to are species, speciation, reproductive isolation, behavioral isolation, geographic isolation, and temporal isolation. All right, and then in your notebook, a special way to take notes is to write a compare and contrast table describing the three mechanisms of reproductive isolation. So, isolating mechanisms. These are isolation, things that are set apart and kept um, on their own, right? So, isolating mechanisms, we're going to talk about some things that could lead to reproductive isolation. So, when populations become reproductively isolated, they can evolve into two separate species. So reproductive isolation can happen in a bunch of different ways. Uh, we're going to talk about behavioral geographic and temporal isolation. So what happens over time? Uh, we've got a bunch of species, members of a species, they share a common gene pool, right? And they are um, interbreeding and sharing their DNA. Over time, um, something happens to separate these two and maybe a group goes this way and that way, whatever happened. And over time, their their genes change, they evolve. And what happened to this set of, of individuals was different than what happened to this set. And so they become two separate species. So let's look at behavioral isolation. So these are both meadow larks. We have a western meadow lark and a eastern meadow lark. All right, and so behavioral is how we act. And so these birds over time they have developed a different mating call and so I'm going to play the call um, and you can listen to how they sound differently and so basically um, the birds of the western meadowlark species will not respond to the eastern uh, mating call and vice versa so it's not that they couldn't interbreed it's just they don't because of their behavior so here is the western meadowlark Let it go one more time. Okay, you can listen to that later um, if you wish. Here is the eastern meadow lark. All right, very different mating calls. So obviously they are not going to mate with each other. They're not responding to the same song. All right, another type of isolation is geographic isolation. So um, when two populations become separated by barriers such as rivers, mountains, or large bodies of water, geographic isolation can occur. So after geographic isolation, there, there were changes in the gene pool that were not passed on to the other group, right? So natural selection happened differently for this um, kaibab squirrel than it did for this abert squirrel. And you can see how they look um, different in appearance. So these guys are uh, separated by the Grand Canyon. They just can't meet up. Um, to interbreed. So geography, land mass, these are geographic isolation. Um, some barriers apply to some populations and not others. So for instance, uh, this Grand Canyon is keeping these squirrels apart, but it's probably not going to isolate birds, right? And then there will be some other events, maybe a large flood would um, enable fish populations to mix. Okay, so there's lots of 
different scenarios that could um, lead to or disrupt geographic isolation. All right, uh, the other type is temporal. Um, we're talking about time. So it could be day and night. It could be um, animals that are um, mating in different seasons, or it could be even on different days. So here are two frog species. Um, Rana aurora breeds earlier in the year than Rana boilii. I don't know how to say that. Boilii? Sounds good to me. All right, so they mate at different times of the year. So um, they are not going to breed with each other. And there's a really cool, there's some orchids that live in the same rainforest, um, but each has a flower that lasts only one day and must be pollinated on that day to produce seeds. So because they bloom on different days, they cannot pollinate or cross-pollinate. All right, um, there are two main types of speciation. So something could have happened gradually, like over time the birds slowly evolve into their uh, new species, or it could be something happened where it was really quick, you know, something happened with the food source that was available, and only the birds with really long beaks were able to get food, so those ones survived, and now all the offspring have really long beaks. So there could be punctuated could be very fast or it could be gradual speciation all right so let's talk about darwin's finches um darwin's finches this is what is believed to have happened so there's something called founder's effect so the first species to arrive is the founder um so a bird arrived to the main to the islands from a mainland and then there's a bunch of different islands in the Galapagos. So they became geographically isolated on different islands. Uh, there were some changes in the gene pool. Something happened. Over time, each finch became adapted to their local environment. And then they developed some behavioral reproductive isolations. So they didn't have desirable traits or the same courtship rituals as the other finches. So they just don't respond to each other anymore. And then um, competition um, continued, and then over time we have evolution by natural selection. All right, so let's review. Um, so a species, um, biologists define species. All right, so biologists define a species as a population or group of populations whose members can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So based on this definition, what needs to happen then for one species to divide or give rise to a new species? Uh, so the formation of a new species is called speciation. Um, what happens when some of a population, the members stop breeding with other members, the gene pool can split. And once the population has split into two groups, changes in the gene pool cannot spread to the other group. Because these two groups can no longer interbreed, reproductive isolation has occurred. And then um, the different isolating mechanisms that can lead to speciation, we have behavioral, geographic, and temporal. I hope that makes sense. Don't forget to make the compare and contrast table in your notebook for the three types of reproductive isolation mechanisms. And have a good day. Bye.